and welcome to Liam McCann's household. Um, I'm working from home uh, in the lockdown. Um, I am an associate professor in criminology at the University of Lincoln. I've been teaching criminology at Lincoln campus since it opened way back in 1995. I have to apologize that I'm going to be presenting this presentation standing up. I'm doing this presentation standing up because um, it's very difficult for me and nerved not to move around. Um, I had a student many years ago who uh, said, Liam, you'd be a very good lecturer if only, if only you um, had the ability to stand still. I said to the student, if I stood still, I'd probably spontaneously combust. Today, I'm going to be introducing you to criminology, why it excites me and infuriates me, and why my kids grew up saying, Mum, Dad, Dad's shouting at the TV again. Studying criminology. Oh, that's a very exciting subject, many people will say. Attracting the type of people who are fixated with serial killers, asking that they want to get inside the heads of serial killers. There's nowhere less likely I'd like to, I'd like to want to go. It's a discipline wherein everyone's an expert in our area. If you'd someone in a pub who was saying that they were an, a nuclear physicist, you wouldn't have people rushing in saying, I'll tell you what they should do with that atom. However, with criminology, that is entirely different. People rush in with law and order debates, usually offering the purported panacea of bring back the birch, bring back national service, throw away the key. We compete against common sense ideas and answers. Mrs. Thatcher stated, crime is crime is crime. If only it was that simple. But then, of course, I wouldn't have a job. Crime stimulates fear, anger, exasperation and desperation. I remember many years ago at a public talk in Hull, um, the assistant chief constable, etc., on the platform, and there was me. The radio announcer said, well, Mr. McCann, you may need, you're lucky that there's so many police officers in the audience today because you may need some of them to escort you off the platform. And look at the Irish, as I got off the platform, there was the elderly, irate member of the public demanding me and saying that I didn't know the reality of crime. I say the look of the Irish here because the look of the Irish, I've never understood that expression because the elderly man had a walking stick and the look of the Irish, it was a tripod walking stick. So there he's pointing at me and I'm shadow boxing that there. It's an area that stimulates uh, simple questions. What's the cause and what's the answer? If two plus something equals four, I'm testing your mathematical skills out there. So then in the same way, a person plus what equals the criminal. We explore basic simple questions like prison, does it work? Are they genuinely correctional institutions? In America, prison officers are called correctional officers. Or are they an expensive means of making bad people worse? An expensive means of making bad people worse? Who would have said something quite so ridiculous? Well, actually, that was the Home Office in 1993. Consider the similarity between imprisonment and our own current self-policing and our own home detention curfews in this environment and the depressing reality of our self-imposed indeterminate sentences. I think abolitionist criminology might be much more popular at the end of the lockdown. We explore the politics of law and order. Ideas like new labor being tough on crime, the right wing political agenda, and tough on the causes of crime, the more liberal approach to crime. There's some issues like poverty, unemployment, educational exclusion and failure. The causes of crime led to prisons full of rehabilitation programs, and I want to symbolize what these programs actually are like. Things like anger management, victim empathy, drugs awareness. I'm going to do this here sitting down. Okay, Liam. Yes. You bump into somebody on the landing. What do you do? Uh, batter them. No, Liam. Back to your cell. 
Okay, Liam, week two. You bump into somebody on the landing. What do you do? Uh, threaten to batter them? No, Liam, back to your room. Okay, Liam, you bump into somebody on the landing. What do you do? Uh, say oops, sorry. Yes, Liam, you've passed the course. Now complete the self-evaluation survey. At the end of this training, are you more likely or less likely to batter somebody? Tick more likely for you remaining inside. Tick less likely for you getting out imminently. They're not the brightest people in the world, but even they know which box to tick. There's been so many of these programs launched in our prison system that Pat Carlin, Professor Pat Carlin, made the wonderful observation. It really is a wonder that our prisons aren't, aren't empty. Criminology is not simply about the criminal, but what makes something, someone, criminal? The criminalization process. Think of the idea of the criminal gene. I use my countryman, fellow countryman here, Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde was sent to prison for being gay. Thankfully, that sexuality is no longer criminalized. But that gene, if there is such a thing as a gay gene, is certainly no longer a criminal gene. Just think how crime changes in history. We explore the traditional blameworthiness of bad parents and families. Now the, the more complex word, dysfunctional families as causing criminality. Parents whose children grow up to be larger louts. Alliteration is really important in law and order debates. Think of ideas of bail bandits, road rage, and here larger louts like you and Blair. The Prime Minister's own son, celebrating his GCSE results, gets arrested for being drunk and disorderly. Is that bad parents or ugly rumours? I'm making the reference here for um, Tony Blair's band whilst he was at university. Politicians think and those who attempt to explain crime are really not making explanations, but are instead making excuses. Margaret Thatcher said, the only person responsible for crime is the criminal. Durr. Uh, if anyone else, it's the professional apologists. That's ideas of academics who might actually try and explain more complex reason. Jack Straw claimed, Youngsters inhabit a culture of excuse, and I don't think anyone is the victim but themselves. You may know his son William was cautioned by the police for selling £10 worth of cannabis to an undercover journalist. Anyone is to blame but themselves, clearly not in his son's case. We explore more moral panics and concerns about youth culture. I usually show here a 1970s pr protest picture of American these protesters saying, stop hippies, long hair equals communism. This is quite pertinent at present because given the lockdown, the spread of long haired hippies, so long haired communist hippies, seems that more likely a new European version of the domino effect. If we could only identify such kids early on, David Blunkett said, call for the behavior of nursery school children to be monitored to identify those likely to become the criminals of tomorrow. Just what our wonderful teachers need now. If, if it's not parents to blame, it's the teachers to blame. A new Ofsted inspection, criminality sats would be hilarious. Probably one of the most ridiculous claims uh, I've ever heard by a politician was by David Blunkett. Blunkett wants to lock up child bail bandits. The Home Secretary said intensive fostering was one option he was considering to deal with cases such as that of the 11-year-old Carded boy charged with more than 70 offences who was bailed last week, he said, to roam the streets, putting police officers and others in grave danger. Now, I visualise this here to illustrate the average 11 year old is four foot 10 and a quarter inches. I don't care what the kind of reckless hooligan they apparently are. I don't think he will manage to put police officers in grave danger.
But what of new crimes and new criminals? Crimes like aggressive beggars. Um, I give to homeless people, I give to people begging in the street. I'm fortunate, I'm lucky. Um, I was walking past m and in town uh, a couple of years ago and there was a guy begging and I stopped to give him a couple of pounds um, and he was drinking the bottle of m and port and had this lovely idea that sort of somebody had cut out the middleman and as I'm handing the guy a couple of pounds, this man walking past says, I wouldn't give him anything. He'll only spend it on drugs or alcohol. And I'm not normally this quick, but I said, turned around and said, I happen to know he's saving up to join a gym. Well, the poor guy went, <laughs> in terms of this here, a kind of idea of what it is we're going to blame people for. If I was homeless, I think I'd be drinking even more than I am now drinking during lockdown. In these new times, criminology increasingly addresses crimes of the states. Crimes such as Hillsborough, the genuine reality of the gutter press exposed in that case. Quite literally reporting appalling lies about Liverpool fans that simply did not happen. Imagine losing a daughter, a sister, a friend on that day and being told that as her body was passed across the crowd, that fans were sexually abusing that victim. Recent investigations showed that was totally uncorroborated and entirely made up account of what happened on that day. We explore issues like rendition in the war on terror. When I was a kid, rendition meant you had to stand up and present in front of your parents or peers. Today, rendition means, in the words of the former CIA uh, agent Robert Baer, if you want a serious interrogation, you send a prisoner to Jordan. If you want them tortured, you send them to Syria. If you want someone to disappear, never to see them again, you send them to Egypt. This is what the CIA were involved in. You have the option to study modules from across the School of Social and Political Sciences, options in politics, international relations, sociology and social policy. To go out with the subject area of criminology, it's pejoratively referred to as a pilfering subject, and explore issues such as history, psychology, media, media studies, gender and sexuality, racism, social policy, politics, education, homelessness, film, music, culture. Think of youth culture, subculture, those ideas of cultural influences, science, and in particular forensic science, and the so-called expertise of scientists offering us explanations for crime. Crime invites critical analysis. Criminology is the tool for that analysis. What is crime? The original criminological question. The Clash have a song, Bank Robber, but back in the days at least they had the decency to be outside the bank with a double barrel shotgun. Contemporary bank robbers tend to be inside the bank with a double first uh, in economics. How much is there? Higher, higher or lower, lower? At a general open day, I would say, is the example of parents. Imagine if you returned to your cars in a car park and every single car in the car park had its front windscreen broken. Police would have the option of recording that as one crime because it was likely that the same offender committed the crime or 360 crimes in terms of that. I finished my open day and a police officer came up and he says, I'll tell you the difference. I got a little nervous and said, what would it be? And they said, if we didn't catch the criminal, it was one crime not solved. If we did catch the criminal, it would be 360 solved. Is it changing in my day? That historic idea that in our past we had this romantic merry England where no crimes occurred. My dad used to say nobody ever fought with her feet. Nobody ever kicked in, in fights in Belfast when he was a barman. I don't... I did a historical search and given stories, a list of stories, oh, we got really annoyed of people who've been kicked to death in bar fights. Criminology attempts to provide an understanding of the reality of crime. The reality of crime, even like prolific serial killers like Ray. Ray was one of Britain's most notorious serial killers. Over a period of years, Ray promised to take people to work and kill them. Ray promised to take people on holiday and kill them. Ray kept appearing in court and said, yeah, 
People warned I was dangerous. People warned I wasn't taking due care and attention. People warned I was likely to kill people. But you're just going to have to spend more money on me, making me better. Ray, you probably know more formally as Ray L. Track. Crimes of the powerful and corporate crime. Today is World Earth Day. And we should also mention environmental crime and new green criminology. That's just some of the breadth of criminology inquiry and why it's interesting and engaging for me. What type of, jo of jobs do graduates do? I'm a youth offending team leader, a probation service coordinator, a prison governor, but not just in the area of crime and deviance. I remember James has been a wonderful example of this year. James graduated, um, uh, I wrote him his reference, and he commenced his employment as a trainee manager in WH Smith's. Doesn't get people very excited. A year after graduation, James was having a career change and was moving on to work for MI5. The guy from MI5 came on campus to interview me. He asked me some questions. What type of family do you think James comes from? I said, I don't really know. I would presume a respectable middle-class family. He said, um, does James have any drug or alcohol problems? And I said, well, again, I don't know. Ah, he's a good attender, is always alert and well presented, so I'd be very surprised if he did. And then he asks the next question. This question may be a little bit difficult to answer. And knowing the history of MI5, I decided I probably had a guess what it was. He said, do you know, does James have any unusual sexual habits or preferences? And I looked at him and went, just how well do you think I know my students? But I really wish I'd have said, well, apart from the whips and chains. My educational philosophy is that education is about empowerment. Education should be life changing and stimulating. Education opens genuine opportunities for ordinary people like myself. I'm a working class lad, I call, I'm an old man now. A working class lad of a council estate who went to university, who discovered education, who pursued and worked hard in education. I'm now, despite growing up in a working class council house, I now live in a large five bedroom house in Lincoln. I'm a very fortunate man. I work in a lovely job in a wealthy university. Now, your questions. Um, you're going to have the opportunity in the future to come and visit the university and its campus. And I would really encourage you to try and do that there. Um, if you come to the university, you'll see that we offer a wide range of courses in many subject areas. I tried to count last night how many um, courses we actually had, and I went online to the A, A to Z of the courses. And by the time I got to criminology, I had counted 47 courses. So I decided at that point that I wasn't going to go right to the end to zoology. Come and see the university. Come and see the fabulous campus. Come and see the lovely city that is based in. Safe, friendly and quiet. Get the opportunity, if you come to a future open day after this lockdown, to come along and see the campus. Walk up Steep Hill and see the fabulous cathedral where you will be graduating. I say at this point, as soon as parents see the cathedral, they say, I've got the dress for your graduation in my head already. And that's just your dad. I'm going to now try and answer some of your questions. I've got a question here. A Amelia Dream, uh, even if you don't take criminology, are there criminology societies? Yes, uh, uh, there is a criminology society. They're very active. They offer talks. I many, remember many years ago, the criminology society were very good in arranging a talk between the prospective parliamentary candidates at the 1997 general election in terms of this year. Um, uh, very interesting debate on law and order and what was a new topic at that time, which was called Zero Hours Policing. I think got any other questions? Let me see if I can scroll up or down. Do you think, sorry, this was one from Darren Hill. Do you think you have seen an increase and or decrease in certain criminal activity since the COVID-19 outbreak? Obviously, the most obvious area in this here is domestic violence. Uh, shockingly, 
um, the levels of physical, psychological and emotional abuse that women endure in relationships in this country. Uh, women's refuges uh, are really important that people, if you can afford to support them at this time, because they are in such great demand and provide such great service to women who are victimised. Um, there are a few areas of criminology that make me angry. Um, but the abuse of women in so-called loving relationship is just shocking. Obviously, at this time, lots of families, lots of people are under immense pressure, economic, uh, psychological pressure, and we will try and need to try and support those people. But taking those pressures out on women is just shocking. Thank you. More criminal activity in this isolation period? Yes, again, this is an interesting question. Um, there would be more in areas like that there, but clearly there are less more. I saw the idea of people being able to go out and vandalise. Um, you know, think of how much crime is related around alcohol and drinking and public socialising. Those types of crimes will not happen. Uh, there's a, obviously, my, you know, the pubs aren't getting that customer. Seamus Dugnall says, Liam, you may not remember me. My name is different here. It's actually James Doyle. Just wanted to say you were a massive inspiration. Wow, that's a lovely question and comment. I graduated in 2014. Um, just trying to read your full question, Seamus. Uh, to the, um, Young people with behavioural difficulties, working with young, would you, would love to go into college and university lecturing, what advice could you give? Well, after that experience of going into university, um, with that background experience, it obviously the key advice is getting more qualifications, getting nowadays the entrance requirement is basically a PhD, um, expensive and enduring and long time but well worth doing, and you'd be more than welcome to come back and uh, start a PhD at the University of Lincoln. Um, Owen Simon Meredith, uh, do you think COVID-19 outbreak will create a greater push for working from home, being for careers or for carers or university? Do you think it could be create a shake-up in the way societies are run uh, from here. Um, also, what is your alcohol of choice during this lockdown? There are two really interesting questions. Um, yeah, this environment is creating a real different way in which clearly the world is working. Um, I have even become relatively confident with IT in terms of the skills involved. Uh, my drink of choice is always the same. I'm a lager man and a red wine man. Um, we need to chill as well and take life too seriously. These are difficult times. Stephen Hill, do you think more could be done in schools to educate young minds in order to prevent them from turning to crime? I am really frustrated the way in which schools and parents are always presumed to have the answers to crime. Um, uh, some group of my students this term were working on knife crime and they quoted a BBC newspaper article saying that schools needed to do much more in knife crime. If you look at the burden that is on teachers in terms of their everyday working environment, in terms of assessments, in terms of assess, in terms of people monitoring, in terms of work that they do know, teachers are actually her heroes. Many of you will understand this so more. <clears throat> in your lockdown when you're dealing with one or two of your own kids and teachers are dealing with 30 of them in the classroom. Schools work immensely hard to promote caring learning environments, but schools aren't the solution to what is going on in our society in times of austerity and cuts and job uncertainty and poverty in terms of this year. Um, a school teacher friend told me in Lincoln, one of the school pupils in a primary school had brought with them for lunch 
last night's cold chips. That's the type of poverty that people are living in these days. <laughs> An interesting question there. I really can't even answer that, uh, Mohammed. So I'll move on to one from Stefan MH. Do you think more could be done in schools? Sorry, that's the one I've just answered, Stefan MH. seem to be running out of questions. I had some that were already prepared for me, so let me have a look at some of those. Um, what are the main causes of criminal behaviour? What research is there to support this? Well, the main causes of crime is one of those classic examples of what New Labour said, they'd be tough on crime, tough on the causes of crime, but only if we could agree on what those causes are. If you look at the mass variations, the most reliable cause of crime is inequality. That is the key determinant, not poverty, but inequality. Societies in which some people are immensely wealthy and other people are extremely poor. America would be one example. Um, Russia, another example. High levels of serious crime and murder. Uh, even Britain now, the murder rate actually going up now in times of growing inequality. But go to countries like Sweden and their murder rates are incredibly low per 100,000 compared to a country like ours. Annabelle Phipps has asked, what do you think governments could do for families to take, make sure they shouldn't have to resort to crime to survive? Uh, this is a really complex one because by and large very few families have to resort to crime to survive in terms of this here. It's much more a more complex social issue than just, you know, need. Um, things like social marginalization, things like uh, living in poverty, things like lack of opportunity. Uh, obviously, those things can help in this. Do you think the media shapes our views of crime and violence? I think that's a br brilliant question, Josephine Garrity. Um, the media depiction of crime is always disproportionately on violent crime. Those kinds of things I started mentioning by saying the sexy crimes, the you know the spree killers, the multiple murderers in terms of those types of crimes, the everyday crimes that have happened to us all that are relatively negatively reported. Uh, I mentioned the bank robberies earlier. Um, the banking crisis cost each of us £12,500. Junio Taylor, what do you take on copyright law and piracy? What do you think about using well-known music and getting in legal YouTube, <laughs> legal trouble for it in terms of here? I'm one of those people who does use music in terms of my lectures. Um, I'm quite like to try and use that type of thing. I'm not really sure on what the legal and copyright is. As far as I understand, in most cases, when it's used for educational resources, then that's perfectly permissible in terms of that there. My overall perspective on the judicial system I think the judicial system in this country is really unusual. Um, there used to be a very traditional view of the judici judiciary as fairly reactionary, and in many ways that can actually be true. But actually, under Thatcher, um, it was the church that was the main opponent to the excesses of government. Uh, certainly under New Labour, the judiciary played a major role in stopping New Labour putting through legislation that took, that was simply excessive and broke our human rights in that way. Um, probably the best example of the judiciary and the politics of the judiciary would be Lord McPherson. Lord McPherson had that brilliant background, literally a lord, ex-SAS, but produced one of the most critical reports into institutionalised racism in the Metropolitan Police Force 
than any report has ever done. Can I thank you all for attending this presentation, linking into listening to me uh, go on. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe, stay well. Slantia is the garage for good health. Good health, everyone. Thank you all.